Hi, this is a lesson on parametric equations. Uh, if you look at this, this is the solutions to the bug activity that you did previous to this lesson. So you can pause and look at that if you need to. Now what we're going to get into are parametric equations. Uh, section 10.6. <clears throat> now the idea behind parametric equations is that you're dealing with uh, <clears throat> position based on time. Now if you notice both these equations, uh, we have one airplane that moves along this line and another airplane that moves along this line and so we would ask are these airplanes going to crash well it all depends if they are at this point at the same time if this one comes in and lands no problem if this one takes off later no problem at all but if they do this do it at the same time such that they reach this point at exactly the same time then we're going to be in trouble so parametric equations will tell us what their position is based on the time. And so that's some of these questions here. Uh, <clears throat> with a parametric equation, we're going to take x and y, and we're going to base them both on t. Now, with this one, uh, we have y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 3x minus 2. We can turn them into parametric equations by letting the x variable just be plain t and the y variable being 2t plus 1. Oh, I guess this is a different equation, sorry. But, uh, and then this one would be x equals 2t, so your x values would be moving twice as fast, and then y would be moving twice as fast too, but just having different situations. So when we represent parametric equations, it's x and y, both in terms of t. That will give us our position at a certain time. So definition parametric equation, a system of equations with more than one dependent variable. Often parametric equations are used to represent the position of a moving point. Now this is the shortcut way, but we won't always use this. X might be defined in more than just plain T terms as we learned up here. So let's look at this. If we take this, this is called rectangular. These are rectangular coordinates positions. And so this is what we've been dealing with for most of your high school career. Rectangular coordinates. This one here then would be in parametric form. And the easy way to go from rectangular to parametric is simply to let x equal the t variable and then y equal to whatever function you had here, but replace the x with t. And to plot this now, to me the easiest thing to do to figure these things out is to plot points. So if I take t equal to negative 3, under these conditions, x equals t, so I can put in a negative 3. y is equal to t squared, so I can put in a 9. So if I had to plot this point, this would be negative 3, 9. And so your picture is going to turn out just like the parabola that we had before. So we continue on. This is negative 2, 4. And I think you can figure out the rest. Why don't you fill this in, and I'll show the results and show the picture. You go ahead and do that and pause. So here's the resulting chart that you have, and you just plot the x and y coordinates because this is still x, y plane. It's just that we're based on certain times. And so you might ask, well, where am I at time 1? At time 1, I'm at the point 1, 1. So I'm right here at time 1. Uh, time negative, yeah, we don't deal with that too often, but in this situation, we will use negative time two to get the full picture of what we're doing. Okay, then moving on. Now we're given a parametric equation in this next example, and what we want to do is plot what this thing looks like on the xy plane. So we need to get some points. Now our time here is all in terms of positive values, including zero. And so we're just going to take this x, uh, I'm sorry, take the t and plug it into this x and get out my x value. So if I do this, this would be a negative 4. I do this one, 0 in here, it'd be 0. So my first point at time 0 is going to be negative 4, 0. So I'd plot it right there. At time 1, I plug that in, I'm going to get negative 3. And plug in that, I'm going to get 3. So negative 3, then I'm all the way up at 3. Continue to do this, fill this down, and then pause this, pause this and fill it in, and then I'll show you the solutions again. So here's your result. And so you can check your values that you plotted and the kind of curve that you ended up with. This is one branch of a parabola. 
Now, we're familiar with the rectangular coordinates on this. This would be x in terms of y squared or something of that fashion, a translation or transformation of that. And so <clears throat> what we want to do is maybe what does this look like? Well, you can do something that's called eliminate the parameter. And first of all, um, let's, say, let's do this in your notes here. If we want to eliminate the parameter, what we can do is solve for t in each case. So if I have uh, this one here, I look at this one, this is a simple t. So I'm going to solve for t equal to y over 3. So I took this equation, solve for t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that t and I'm going to plug it into my x equation. So if I do that, I get x equals, wherever I see the t, I'm going to put in y over 3. So you just kind of combine the two equations together. So sure enough, this is my parabola that would open sideways. And if I solve this out, I'm going to let you do that, but you could get y equals plus or minus the square root of 9x plus 36. That's if I solve for y. And in this situation, since I started at uh, t equal to 0, I don't have this negative situation. I only have the positive branch. My screen went funny there, sorry. Okay, so I only have the positive branch, so I don't need this minus here. There, it did it again. Okay, now if we look at our calculator, let me show you how to graph this. If I want to graph this in parametric mode, what I do is I can take this and switch over to parametric. So go mode, slide down, go parametric. And when you push y equals, you're going to end up with x and y. Those are both the uh, two equations that I'm going to need to graph this parametric in terms of t. So I type in t. Where do I get t? Oh, there it is right there. It's the variable. So when I'm in this mode, the t is going to show up when I click on it. So I get t squared minus 4 for my x-coordinate and 3t there for my y-coordinate. And if I graph this, I get this curve right here. Now your window, I just did zoom standard, and so it's going to show up like this. Uh, that's good enough for us right now. Now if I do this in uh, rectangular coordinates, i got to go back to the function mode. And I go y equals. I've already typed it in. You can do this for yourself as well. You should play around with this. I get the square root of 9x plus 36. And that's exactly the same curve. I get the same curve right there. Okay, let's go back to the notes then. So with this example, we have, um, well, let's read this first. Parametric curves have a direction of motion. So what, ha what happens is that your T is like ticking. Tick, 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 tick. And for each tick, I'm going to get a new X and Y coordinate respectively. And so I plot those new coordinates. So we usually deal with arrows. Uh, the parameter doesn't always have to be time. What a lot of times it is, too, is theta. And theta would be an angle measurement. In this case, you can use theta or t. You just replace out the t if you have to graph it. Before you go graph this with your calculator, though, I want you to plug this in and see what happens. And when you're plugging in the points, try to guess what kind of shape is going to end up on your curve as you're plotting these points. So I'll start off with the first one with you. If I have t equal to 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so multiplied by 3 is 3, and then sine of 0 is 0. If I take 1 and plug it in here, oh, that's not so nice here. Well, oh well. You have to go to your calculator. So make sure it's in radian mode, and then find out what your x's and y's. Fill this in, and then go ahead and graph. So here are the values that you end up with. And they're not so nice to plot. You can only plot to about the tenth as a guesstimate. Uh, but if you look at the shape, look at the shape that you end up with. It's a circle. Wow, x and, oh, the x coordinates based on the cosine, the y values based on the sine. Yeah, that's just like the unit circle. What does this 3 mean, though? What happens when we multiply this by 3? Well, obviously, your radius turns out to be Three. And this is really kind of nice because you end up with uh, a different situation. Uh, if you think about it, cosine is equal to 
x over r. So if I solve for x, x is equal to r cosine theta. And similarly, you can get y equals r sine of theta. So if I graph both of these, what I'm going to end up with is a circle because I'm just taking the values of, of the x and y coordinates off the unit circle, but I'm expanding it out by this r. Oh, cool. So I'm always going to get a circle as long as these two values are the same. You might want to try to see what happens when the values are different and see what shape you do get. Conjecture and think about it and try it. Now down here I say what t values might be better. Well, you're using cosine and sine, plugging in 1, 2, 3, 4. That's nice if you have your calculator. But I think that you could figure out that these values might be a little bit better if you use, for instance, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and so on. And so you can figure that out as well. I do have the values already done, so you can pause, and then you can look at what I have here. Okay? These values are much nicer to deal with as far as plotting, obviously, because we're doing the trig values. Now, moving on to our rest of our notes here. Uh, this says homework. Uh, as part of the note sheet, though, I want you to plot these. And you can check out this website as well and uh, try to plot these and do these three problems before you come to class. Please make sure you come to class with these done. Also, like I said, play around with this one and figure out what happens when your values are different than the same R. What kind of shape? I think you can conjecture what happens, and maybe you're right, maybe you're not. Okay, thanks. And this is parametric equations. We'll do this last part in class, so you can hold that off. So only do up to this problem number three. Thank you, and have a great day.